punk, viewed by some as the raucous caterwauling of an army of talentless ne'er-do-wells, and by others as an artistic movement that punctured the pomposity of the establishment with a safety pin and then gobbed in its face. Either way, it happened. It had a huge impact, and here's how it was born in the UK. It's the mid-70s, and the UK is a place of industrial action, the three-day week, and the feeling that the energy of the 60s hasn't quite translated into the floral, free-love utopia it promised. In music, stadium rock and ABBA rule, and disco is starting to send its sequin-soaked glamour across the Atlantic. For some young people, the dichotomy of what they see in their streets and what they see on top of the pops is too much to handle. It's time for a change. The 60s tried love, they will try anger. On the Old Kent Road, Steve Jones, Glenn Matlock and Paul Cook all meet at the fashion store Sex, owned by designer Vivian Westwood and her boyfriend Malcolm McLaren. Searching for a lead singer, a young John Lydon is spotted wearing an I Hate Pink Floyd t-shirt and recruited to front what would become the Sex Pistols. The combination of the band's driving garage rock and roll sound of Lydon's acerbic and political lyrics would set the tone for what was to follow. Throughout 1976, the touring Sex Pistols would start to influence many artists around the country, producing pockets of punk that would grow in their own directions. Singer with the pub rock band The 101ers, Joe Strummer, saw the Sex Pistols and instantly started the clash. Howard D. Voto and Pete Shelley, who would later form the Buzzcocks, saw the Pistols and invited the band to perform in Manchester at the Lesser Free Trade Hall. Some weird noises coming out of these things. That show was attended by Peter Hook and Bernard Sumner. Morrissey and Mark E. Smith respectively went on to form Joy Division, The Smiths, and The Fall. The punk sound and aesthetic was also being influenced by a concurrent scene coming out of New York led by The Ramones. The Ramones landed in the UK and played a seminal gig at Camden's Roundhouse, attended by many of those who had become stalwarts of the UK punk scene. But all that was needed now was for punk to break into the mainstream, and first out of the blocks was The Dam releasing the first punk single, New Rose, a three-minute masterpiece written by Brian James. And then, the moment that really shoved punk into the national consciousness, the infamous appearance of the Sex Pistols on Bill Grundy's Today Show. After being drafted in as late replacements for Queen, the Pistols turned the air blue after being goaded by the host. Go on, you've got another five you seconds. Say something outrageous. You dirty bastard. Good luck. This led to headlines across the national press and the cancellation of their upcoming anarchy tour of the UK. One, two, three, four. Heading into 1977, an army of bands had formed with a new sound and attitude, ready to turn music, art, politics and culture on its head. So, that's the story of the birth of punk in the UK. But how exactly did punk change the cultural landscape? So one of the ways that punk really affected culture is you have, for the first time in the UK, low culture transcending into higher culture. And what I mean by that, you had examples with the, the mods and the rockers, different moral panics where, where the mainstream press and really the framework of society was terrified that a youth movement would change the values, the ethos, and the way that people live in Britain. But what happens with punk is you go from kids using that music that energy as a way to express their circumstances, whether it's being working class, not being able to get a job, and it going from a small specific group of people into the wider pantheon, if you would, of the, the kind of fashion being on the runway. And now it's to the point where at Tiffany's, the most expensive jeweler probably in the world, or most notorious jeweler, you can get a platinum lock, like the one that Sid Vicious wore. So it's the ultimate going from something that is impactful and meaningful for a specific group to something that's just a fashion statement. 